Hi friends, welcome back. So question for you, does Apple have a monopoly and are they doing monopoly type things? Uh, we actually talked about this a week or so ago. These were the headlines. Uh, Apple is facing a new antitrust lawsuit that could dethrone the iPhone. Does Apple have a monopoly? The Justice Department thinks so. And that was back on March 21st, 2024. Um, I'm starting with this because I want to put this stuff in context. Uh, this new story just came out and um, I, I think it's actually really interesting and important to talk about. And uh, I want to have a conversation with you guys about this. So another headline just coming out uh, today. Uh, John Stewart claims Apple discouraged him from interviewing FTC chair Lena Khan. So basically, um, John Stewart kind of retired. I said kind of because then he took his show from Comedy Central and then put it over on Apple Plus. I think they I think he called it the uh, problem with John Stewart. And it was kind of interesting is that Apple was discouraging from interviewing uh, Lena Khan, who's uh, over at the FTC. Uh, basically, what's going on here is um, Lena Khan then is uh, kind of, how can I say, a proponent of uh, going after tech companies or other types of monopolies. And that's why I opened the question with you, uh, is Apple a monopoly? Um, in fact, actually, it's really interesting. Um, this is the interview um, that he didn't do it over at Apple, but he did the interview with The Daily Show because uh, now he's back at Comedy Central. And I highly, highly, highly recommend watching this interview uh, with Lena Khan. Um, it, it's fascinating because, um, you know, from listening to her speak and these kind of things, uh, the first thing that I was thinking about is, you know, why can't we have our politicians speak in this way, meaning intelligently? And um, it's funny because I, I had a, a comment recently um, in one of my last videos, and you guys can find the video. It's um, one where my wife and I were talking about Korean TV and sort of the content and the difference between that and US TV. And one of the things that I was talking about, it's really a sad situation where American audiences are dumb. And, and guys, I get it more than you know. <laughs> when you say that kind of thing, some people may um, find that really, really offensive. I totally get it. Um, but it, it's frustrating to me because I, I see it all the time in our social media. I'll just give you a simple example. Um, TikTok is really, really popular or the most popular people on YouTube, in my personal opinion, are extremely dumb and appeal to dumb audiences. So this is sort of where I'm coming from with these kind of things and kind of why when I you know mentioned this thing, hey, please watch the Lena Khan thing. It's like a breath of fresh air, to be perfectly frank. Um, the problem is, is that what we're having is you have a, a couple of weird situations uh, in our, you know, current, I guess, culture slash milieu uh, is, is I feel like we have this group of people that want to defend companies, which I always find really, really strange. Now, I understand that, um, you know, we talk about stocks, we talk about money, we talk about these things all the time. And if you have your money in a particular type of company, right, and someone comes out and says, hey, it looks like said company is doing practices that aren't so great you're like looking at your bottom line, right? So I try to chat with you guys about these things in realistic ways because I, I get it guys, I, you know, we all wanna make money, who, who doesn't, right? Um, but I also wanna like illustrate risks and be realistic about these things and also too, um, this kind of risk and, and talking about say Apple being a monopoly or not, um, actually I think is a real concern uh, both for your money in terms of if you're investing in Apple, also too, uh, in terms of the US culturally. Um, when I listened to the interview with Lena Khan, and, and again, I really recommend you hearing it. Um, she goes over all kinds of things that the FTC does. So I'll give you a couple examples and you guys can let me know if you agree or disagree, if these are problems. For my personal opinion, these are problems. So I'll give you a simple example. Um, let's just talk about the internet or your phones. Um, when I lived in USA, uh, internet is really, really expensive. Um, my personal opinion, I don't work for Google or anything like that, uh, is that Google Fiber is the best, but it's not available in, in many, many markets. And oftentimes for many people, you have basically one choice of where to get your internet provider and you're paying too much and it's not very good service. So these are the kind of, that's just one example. Another example um, that uh, Lena mentioned actually in the interview explicitly uh, was inhalers. And the basic gist of what is like, she was like saying, hey, um, why are Americans, you know, paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy an inhaler? And then they pass some sort of, you know, um, law that's like, hey, they can only be, you know, 25 bucks, something like that. Now, when you talk about this kind of thing, and, and for those of you families, you know, who buy inhalers, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Or prescription drug, uh, drugs is another really important one because, again, if you have, say, people in your family who you know, may be elderly and you might be paying $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 a month for drugs, you understand uh, exactly what I'm talking about, right? Um, and, and the issue becomes is like as as a say consumer, you know, you want to have reasonable prices. I don't think it's crazy, but then also as an investor, you want your companies to make money and your stocks to go up. Right. So there's always a conflict of interest there. Um, this is sort of why I think these, these topics are important. 
Um, full disclosure regarding the Apple situation, uh, I use Apple products, I got a couple computers, my wife and I both have Apple phones, etc. cetera. Uh, I like Apple products, but I am well aware of the problems that exist with monopolies because uh, essentially you're wiping out the competition. Um, one of the issues is is that I've been you know thinking about quite a lot lately um, is is there a lot of downside risk with these big tech companies and will they be broken up? So for example, I'm going to go back to the Lena Khan um, example, and again I recommend watching the interview if, if you have time. Um, she talks about uh, Facebook because John sort of mentioned you know what's going on with Facebook, why are you guys after them, etc. And um, this was the basic gist of it is that okay, so she said uh, when Facebook was transitioning from desktop to mobile they realized that they were behind in mobile, right? And so what they did, they went out and they bought WhatsApp and they bought Instagram. Um, and essentially the argument that she would make is like, well, you're not actually innovating products in-house anymore, right? You're not, you know, hiring, having your employees make new code, make new sites, et cetera, to, you know, enter the marketplace. You're basically buying your biggest competitors, right? You're buying Instagram, you're buying WhatsApp. And it's interesting because when you put it in that context, I, I totally get it. <laughs> like, it sounds like a monopoly to me. And, and, and the basic uh, gist of it is, is that you're trying to protect the consumer because as a consumer, right, not talking about an investor, but as a consumer, um, we'll get better products and essentially better competition, better pricing, all these things, if you have multiple companies, you know, competing for your dollars. Uh, another simple example was um, recently, uh, was it Kroger wanted to buy Albertsons? I think that's the one, or is it Albertsons? One? I think it's Kroger wanted to buy Albertsons. It could be the other way around, but I think it's Kroger wanted to buy Albertsons. And, and the question I would pose to you is like, is that a good thing or, or not, right? And obviously the company's gonna make the case of like, oh, it's awesome that that you know we do this and we consolidate and, and we can you know streamline our, uh, you know, our, our supply chain, all these things that are and so ultimately going to be better for the consumer. And then we've had these conversations in, in you know, in the channel. And it's, it's sort of why I ask you guys opinions, because everyone's market's going to be different. Um, someone wrote in a comment of like, for example, that, well, you know, there's a Kroger and there's Albertsons, you know, in my neighborhood, one store isn't really that nice. So if they buy out with the other one, who's basically not that nice, would it just close down? And then suddenly then everyone has to go to just one store, right? I think that's an interesting conversation. But Going back to this particular thing, um, the other thing that really stood out to me is, is when you actually read through comments of this one, and there's one I wanna just point out in particular, um, because I, I, again, I wanna address the issue. Someone's like, um, uh, Chris, you know, why, why, why are you down on Americans and why do you call Americans dumb? <laughs> um, and and I, I wanna address it in this way. So um, just so you guys know that I'm not like talking just crazy stuff. Um, so this is 14 hours ago. This is a comments on the video of the, come to the, the FTC one. And um, the, someone posed the question, I think it's a legitimate question, it's something that I think about as well when I see these kind of interviews, is why don't we have presidential candidates like this woman? And again, we're, we're referring to the interview with Linda Khan. Um, and uh, the person comments, because she's not an idiot. <laughs> it's like, like, that's literally the same kind of thought that's going through my mind of like, hey, why are leaders like so dumb? Um, but the problem is it's largely to do with our voter base votes for dumb people. And it's, it's really frustrating to be perfectly frank. Um, another person trying to, you know, just, just read comments, guys. I'm just reading comments. Uh, imagine this lady trying to save you from the corporations and then people want, went and vote for Trump, MTG, and Bobert or Bubert. <laughs> uh, I cannot imagine her frustration, right? And if you understand these contexts, again, um, and, and I don't want to get dragged down the weeds of politics forever, but it, it's just part of the internet that we live in. Some people find like these kind of, you know, uh, how can I say, personalities, um, like their idols and influential, et cetera. And to me, when, when I you know see these said people, I'm not going to say their names. I just it, it's it's obviously that they're 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 not so bright. <laughs> How about I'll, just, I'll leave it at, at that, you know? Right? And and you know, I, I'm trying to be polite here. And also too, this person's like, you're not wrong. Another one's like, if Apple doesn't want her on a podcast, imagine the corporate donor power any opponent of hers would get. Here's another comment: um, You don't vote for these kinds of people. Uh, she could run, and you'd still be like, Kamala got my vote. Another one, you actually have a VP candidate a lot like her. Uh, another another comment, she would never get the, quote, corporate money to run, let alone win. We are in a corporate run nation. So, you know, for me, um, these kind of comments, um, how can I say, they speak to me, but I don't know if they speak to you, right? Because again, um, we live in a world where we actually have people defending companies like nonstop. I'll give you a simple example. Um, 
uh, whenever I you know do a, a, a story about Elon Musk and Tesla, et cetera, and kind of the awful things that they do, <laughs> just saying that like uh, strikes a lot of emotion among some some people, right? And and I always find it strange when like people feel like they have to defend billionaires. I just always find it really really weird. Um, anyway, here's some more. Uh, like RFK, too smart because it costs a lot of money to run to become a viable candidate. She's too honest. Again, this is the question was originally was um, why don't we have people like Lena? Uh, you know, essentially becoming our leaders uh, because policy analysts and policy experts aren't politicians. They are dedicated uh, bureaucrats that make everything work and keep people safe. Politicians are self-aggrandizing egomaniacs. So I think this one um, really uh, captures sort of kind of how I feel about this stuff as well. So I know I'm not alone in this regard. Um, regarding Lena in particular, um, I, guys, I encourage you to guys this kind of stuff. And, and again, I, I mention this stuff all the time. Please look people up. Please do. Uh, I, I try to show you an example uh, I look up everything. I try to learn as much as I can, and I learn every single day. Uh, it's something that I, I really stress with you. Um, I, I think it's just an important part of life to, to be willing to learn. Um, when I make comments about it's like Americans are dumb, et cetera, when I say these kind of things, it, it, I feel frustrated because I feel like Americans don't want to learn. Um, I, I'll give you simple examples. Guys, I do YouTube every single day. Uh, I present the news every single day. And so, like for example, if I, you know, hey, look at the story about John Stewart and FTC, et cetera. You'll, sometimes you'll have people in comments like, oh, I, I hate the FTC. They're out to get me and stuff like that. And I'm just like, do you even listen to any words that I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, like simple example, if I say, you know, FTC is trying to stop monopolies on your internet or, or, or your medication or, you know, trying to keep, uh, you know, the cereal boxes affordable, right? These kind of things. If you don't know, um, they were accused of uh, monopolies as well. Was it Kellogg's? And uh, what was the other one? There's two, Kellogg's and Post of price fixing. Or like, what if, um, and they talked about this interview as well. What if all the hotels are price fixing and how would you do that? Um, what if they're all using the same algorithm, meaning that, um, you know, Expedia or Hotels.com or Agoda, Trip.com or whatever, if they're all using the same algorithm to do hotel pricing, then effectively is a monopoly, et cetera. So um, I, I, I mentioned this kind of stuff is, is um, oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> I, I, I wish we would have more intelligent conversations in the USA because I, I feel like someone like Alina actually is looking out for you, but this is just real. Uh, corporations have a lot of power, right? So Apple's like, yo, you're not going to interview or et cetera. And then also too, they have a lot of money to essentially persuade public opinion. Uh, one of the things I think is interesting about this is that she was mentioning, uh, John Stewart asked her, uh, you know, what's the sort of uh, lawyer power comparing say something like Apple or big tech company to the FTC. She was saying like the FTC can be outnumbered 10 to one, which is pretty nuts. And, and that's something that is a very real thing. Uh, what happens with a lot of people, and, and I'll, I'm using Lena's example because she's, she's, she's smart. Um, she's got a BA from Williams, which is a very good school, and a law degree from Yale, and again, also a very good school. Uh, she's smart, and you can hear it in her language. It's, it's obviously that, that she's a smart person. I keep mentioning that because, like, I, I just, I, God, her YouTube is just filled with, it's just, like I guess I'm trying to be polite about this stuff, but just say dumb content. There's no other way to put it. Um, moreover, when you do content every single day, you literally see it for yourself. And I want to bring up this, and, and this is a, a, a fantastic, fantastic movie. It's also based on a book. Um, it's called American Fiction. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And it's actually really interesting because um, this is one of the, um, I guess, stories or perspectives that I also identify with very, very much. Um, if you don't know, I used to work in Hollywood, so I understand this stuff well more, well, way more than, than, than you know. It's essentially, um, when you work behind the scenes and you see how the sausage is made, you have a very different opinion. And what is American fiction about? I don't want to ruin the story exactly, uh, but I'll just give you the premise. Uh, the basic premise is there's a particular author. Um, I don't remember the author's name in, in the story, but uh, it's played by Jeffrey Wright. And um, he wants to write different kinds of stories and he wants to write smart stories, uh, but because he's black, much of the marketplace wants him to write only one kind of story. It says, for example, uh, about gang members, right? Because the marketplace is like, oh, well, you know, black people are all in gangs. <laughs> and, and he doesn't want to write that kind of stuff. And, and it, the story sort of really addresses sort of like, why do people, you know, want that kind of content? Why are people uh, making money on said content? And is said content even real? Which is very interesting because it goes back to the whole YouTube thing, which I mentioned all the time. Um, much of the what you see in social media is completely fake. Uh, I give you just simple examples. We talk about money stuff all the time. Um, for a typical person on YouTube, if you want to have a popular channel, you just look at what's trending and then you figure out, okay, what do people want to hear? 
and then I just do whatever's trending and tell people what they want to hear and become a cheerleader, okay? Now, what if the things that are trending are completely bogus? So for example, uh, what if it's trending on social media that, you know, Tesla is awesome and, and you know, you're gonna like 10X your money by next year. That's trending, right? People want to hear that kind of thing, but frankly, it's not true and it's a lie, right? The same thing with like dog coins. Um, yes, I know they're Doge coins, I'm not an idiot, but there's dogs and they're on a coin. And if that is trending and, and, you, and you know all these kids out there want to hear that their dog coins are going to the moon, if you wanna have a popular YouTube channel, uh, you basically tell them, hey guys, they're gonna to go to the moon. So basically you're lying. Um, so American Fiction addresses that topic fully, does it in a really clever way, and I recommend watching that if you haven't. Um, also too, the, the other thing too, which, which is uh, funny about this, is um, I wanna go over, it's funny, because I always you know, I always have so much to talk about with you guys every single day, but I wanna share with you the kind of stuff that I'm watching and sort of my perspective on these things, and then again, how does this relate to Apple? Well, uh, it relates to it because much of the content that you see is controlled by only a few media groups. And so you don't actually get to see everything or how are things promoted, et cetera, which stories are picked or not picked, um, these kind of things. Um, this story is actually really cool that it was picked. It's called Three Body Problem. It's a now a show on Netflix. Um, I've read part of the book. Uh, I didn't finish it, I just full school, I didn't finish it, but I did, I did read part of it. And um, the thing that really struck out to, uh, stuck out to me, which is fascinating, um, the story actually uh, partially takes place at the university I used to teach called Tsinghua University. I highly recommend watching this. It's a smart show. I don't want to give any spoilers of that other than that it's a sci-fi show and I really like it. And um, hopefully they'll, they'll you know do more content like this. And um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, if you haven't seen it, please do. Um, I mention this kind of stuff because sometimes people ask, hey, Chris, what YouTubers do you like? What do you watch? Um, I always tell you the truth in this stuff. Um, frankly, most, most of YouTube I don't really like that much um, because a lot of it is dumb content. There's no other way to put it. And so this is sort of why I get excited when I see something that's like what I consider to be smart content, um, which is, you know, the interview with Lena Khan and Jon Stewart. And, and already, I already know how this game is played. Um, there's going to be people out there, oh, you know, I hate that Jon Stewart guy. He, he's so dumb. He's so left wing, et cetera. <laughs> All I have to say is, is like, watch it for yourself. And it just goes back to the education issue is like, when people don't wanna learn or be exposed to different ideas, it just, it's just, it's frustrating for me. Um, as a professor, um, you know, my job essentially is to uh, come in a classroom every single day and, and say, hey guys, uh, I have this content I want you to take a look at and, and challenge you and, and also get your opinion. Which also goes to another point um, with YouTube, there was someone who wrote a comment the other day and saying, Chris, uh, why do you want our opinion? Uh, you are the expert. Uh, just tell us what to think. <laughs> this is basically what it boils down to. And, and again, I, I, I find that to be dumb content. Um, what is dumb content? Dumb, dumb content is you know, when, when, a, when a person doesn't want to form their own opinion, they just wanna follow someone else. Uh, it's when a person you know, just wants to be made to feel good and just wants to hear cheerleaders. I, I consider that dumb content. Um, it, it's frustrating because uh, for me, the best content is content that helps you grow, content that challenges you, and content too that also gives you a lot of different uh, opinions and information so you can make up your own mind for yourself. Um, I understand it, it's hard to address every single topic and every single opinion in the world all of the time, um, but I, I try my best to you know present you guys as much stuff as, as possible. Um, the issue though is that you're dealing with audiences that, and again, I, I try not to be mean, but it just have to just be truthful about these kind of things, audiences that prefer dumb content right they, they they and 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 how do i know these things like i i literally see the most popular videos on youtube and it's obvious <laughs> it's like it's obvious like what audiences want you know um and so like i feel like I, I should be you know throwing up money in the air and i should be twerking and and you know singing songs and, and basically putting on a clown hat and a clown nose etc like that and telling you all that your dog coins and tesla is going to go to the moon um but i, I just don't want to do that because it makes me feel really really uncomfortable um and and again this also goes back to like what is decided what what you can view and what you uh, can't view um, because who controls said platform. Um, one of the things that um, is really cool about YouTube and, and I enjoy it with you guys is, is that, you know, slowly we're, we're building a community uh, with people hopefully are like-minded. Not that you have to agree with me of whether or not Apple's a monopoly. It's not really about that. It's about actually having this real discussion about it and, and offering different perspectives. Like, so maybe in some areas, Apple does do monopoly type things, maybe in some areas they don't, right? I, I think that's a legitimate discussion. Um, but we live in a world where people are like, 
don't even want to have this discussion. And if you bring it up, they act like you're just making things up, right? And, and I go back to the Tesla example. I don't want to get stuck on Tesla because we're kind of talking about Apple and these kind of things right now. But um, I, I, um, I, I uh, just want to express the, the frustrations that I have every day trying to do this stuff. And, and, I, and I try my best. Um, guys, I, again, it's, it's YouTube. Um, I, I try my best to inform you and also try my best to keep it light if I can. Because again, you're dealing with audiences that don't want to think. <laughs> I, I'm trying to be polite as, as polite as I can. I, I could be really mean and talk completely free, but it, it's hard. And, and it goes back to um, this story, American Fiction, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, please check it out. Um, there's a couple other stories that I want to recommend as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this show. Um, I'm, I'm just finishing it up myself. Um, you don't have to watch the whole thing. And, and also, too, it's in Korean. So, you know, I, I, I completely get it. Um, but this actually is interesting. It's a dating show in Korea I've been watching. And um, what's interesting is is they really are open about money uh, and relationships in this one, which is is very, very different than the U.S. shows. Um, but this is pretty unusual for um, uh, Korean shows as well. So that's sort of what I talk about. And I'll make videos about these topics uh, going forward in the future. Uh, also, too, uh, this is actually regarding what we watch, social media, etc. Um, this is a movie that and I, and I always like to recommend movies because I think it's fun. Um, this is actually a Nicolas Cage movie that really flew under the radar. Uh, it's called Dream Scenario, one of my favorite movies um, in, in you know, the past year or so. And again, I'm just showing you stuff that I like. Um, this particular one is interesting because it really hits on what does it mean to be an influencer and how do people treat you when sort of like you're, quote, YouTube famous. <laughs> um, I, 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 that's the best way to describe it. I, I just thought this pl- the story was really, really modern. And then the last story I want to mention, I've mentioned it before on the channel, but I just want to mention it again. Um, Tetris. And this actually, this was an Apple show, which is actually quite interesting. Um, so Apple was like, yo, I'm going to make this show because it's about Russia. According to John Stewart, and, and, and I was reading this here, and, I, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. Um, he was saying that um, some of the stuff about China was uh, discouraged. It says here, the show was later named Problem with John Stewart with the top of each show expanded to the coming podcast. The show was hard hitting, tackling issues like U.S. gun policy, indictment of Trump. But Apple reportedly balked at some of the topics Stewart wanted to cover in the third season, which included China and AI, which is really interesting. And, and, and again, it's, it's funny because like as much as I like, you know, the Tetris show, uh, how many stories out there are, are, you know, big companies not wanting to, to talk about? How many stories out there that are not ones that uh, big companies want to say? And, you know, I'll give you an example regarding the American fiction one. When the director, um, uh, and I think, he, I think he wrote the script too, but it's based on the book. So he didn't write the original novel, but it's based on the book. And actually the, the, the guy who wrote the book um, actually went to my school. I don't know him personally though, but he did. Uh, but anyway, I want to go back to this though. The, um, the director came out and said, hey, Hollywood, instead of making, you know, uh, one $200, billion, uh, $200 million movie and throwing all your eggs in one basket, you know, why not make uh, $25 million movies, right? Or why not make $52 uh, million movies, et cetera, because the next Christopher Nolan, Martin Scorsese, right? They're out there. You just got to give someone a chance. And um, this is something that if, if you've ever um, worked in media, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, how there's multiple stories out there that, that you could pick to tell. Um, but kind of, and again, this is what American Fiction addresses, some are deemed by executives in power as being more marketplace worthy than others. But um, all I have to say is just give people a chance. And I know we talked about a lot of different topics in this particular video. Um, when I when I watched this thing, just a lot of things went through my mind. Um, long story short, I really like Lena Khan. <laughs> I, I, I like the work that the FTC does. Um, I completely agree with the, the general topic is that monopolies and you know big companies are um, a major problem in the USA and, and, it, and it's sad. I, I don't know how to say to put it. And, and it's hard to talk about this topic and also to talk about money investing, right? Because they do have conflicts of interest. Of, of course they do, right? If you have money in Apple, you just want Apple to keep you know gaining massive profits and it doesn't matter how many companies that they buy, et cetera. But I think it's important to keep in mind the larger system as, as a whole um, that competition is good for the system. And also too, you should be diversified. So don't put all your eggs in one basket regarding Apple. Um, but it is kind of a difficult world that we live in because if you know that Apple is indeed the most powerful and maybe they're more powerful than the government, then yes, do put your money in Apple, right? Do you understand the conflict of interest? It's, it's, uh, it's hard to talk about these things. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, it's, sometimes you have to put on different hats uh, in your life, but I, I just want to be honest with you guys about these, this stuff. Um, and also too, this also relates to, for me personally, why 
uh, I didn't necessarily want to work on Wall Street. So I understand in the YouTube world and, you know, for many people out there, all they think about is the bottom line all day, every day. And that's the only thing that matters. But I think there's more to life than just that. So anyway, thanks again for watching everyone. Um, I hope you understand the contents of this video and uh, I'll catch you next time.